two hours west of Johannesburg, just outside the town of Rustenburg in the northwest province, lies the Royal Bafokeng Stadium in a village called Pukeng. This is one of the 2010 Soccer World Cup stadiums. It is the only one outside of a major South African city and the only one that is owned by a rural African community. How, you ask, did this stadium get to be here? Hello, or Dumelang as we say in Setswana. My name is Enki Pitswe, and I'm a member of the Royal Bafokeng Nation. I'm gonna take you on a journey through our kingdom. This journey will show you how this state-of-the-art stadium is but one of the many things that reflect our enterprising and innovative spirit. This journey will also show the values we inherited from our forefathers, the spirit of embracing challenges facing them head on, and dreaming of a bright, very bright future for our children. Where I'm standing today is Kale Village, which is where I was born, bred, and somewhat educated. It is also where two branches of my family tree lie. The Pichuas on the one side, and the Sinne on the other side. Across the road, is my grandmother's house. And up the road is most of my family, and this is where my parents live. Like most of the Buffalo Gang, my identity is rooted here in my village. But today, the Buffalo Gang community is much more than villages steeped in the past. The soccer stadium, for instance, and the story of how it came into existence also defines who we are. I remember as a child coming up to our crawl just behind where we're standing, open up the gate and let the cattle come out and herd them out on to the grazelands. There's two rivers over here that we had to go through to get onto the Graceland. And that is how a lot of my life as a young man was lived. Traditionally, the Buffalo King, like most Africans, were farmers who planted crops and herded cattle. Cattle provided our clothing, the milk we drank, we ate their meat, the cow down to decorate our floors and walls inside our houses, the hide for ceremonial drums, and when we died, the last shroud in which our bodies was covered for burial. In addition, cattle were used to pay Lobola for brides. Cattle were the source and means of storing our wealth. Despite this area still being mostly rural today, you will see hardly any cattle in the Royal Bafokeng community. We have largely lost our agricultural way of life. But there is a new source of wealth and a new means of storing it. In 1924, the world's largest deposits of platinum group metals were discovered under our land. Platinum is used in jewelry, catalytic converters to reduce pollution in motor car exhausts and in electrical contacts. It is more valuable than gold. deep in the bowels of the earth, about a kilometer below the surface. This is where the bulk of the platinum group metals that form the basis of the wealth of the Bafokeng 
is a process. And these men here are busy creating the world that will bankroll the school, clinic, social system of the world of the nation. This is where the ore from underground comes so that the platinum and other metals can be concentrated and then extracted. The Buffalo King have entered into agreements with various mining companies to give them a share of the wealth generated here. So this platinum bar does not really represent the wealth of the Buffalo King. Our wealth is far more intangible, far more modern. Whereas our wealth was once in cattle, it now lies in shares, invested in different entities, and managed by the Royal Bufkin Holdings, a company set up to drive the investments by the Royal Bufkin Nation. Setlamo se setlami lo eka ma itlomo a ho trokomela di pele tso tsa sefokeng. Go bona go di pele tso tse di a go la diata. Di tsenya le tseno le le bonalang. The amount of money that uh is being invested in sports, and I know this is a very uh, passionate thing to you. I do sometimes have to pinch myself and say, well, you know, how could that be? How could a, a small community in a place that nobody has ever heard of host both the World Cup and the most celebrated football team in the world? And as a result of that, the world will know about Royal Buffer King. They'll know about the programs that we're trying to achieve. And they will come, we think, and offer skills and money to help us achieve that. This success has been built upon a tough and interesting history. <laughs> The late 1700s was a time of extreme upheaval in Southern Africa that scattered many of South Africa's inhabitants into new areas. It was known as the Lifakani, or Time of Troubles. By the time the fearsome Zilegazi arrived in the area in the 1830s, the Buffalo King had been devastated by previous invaders and so couldn't put up a fight. In 1834, the young Mokhatle and his mother returned from exile. And because they recognized Mzilekazi, they were allowed to gather people and keep their cattle. Mukata was installed as a Khosi, and he went about forging the scattered Bafu King into one nation with a common identity. Many people returned into Pukeng, which was later to become the capital of the Bafu King. Mokatle, at the same time, built cordial relations, first with Mzilekazi, and then with the Boers, who later came into the area. He was a brilliant, visionary diplomat. That's why he's called the father of the nation. Now both, Mokatle's grandson wrote this beautiful description of Kosi Mokatle. When Mokatle took a walk amongst his people in the tribe, some people recited many and various praises of him. Others, it was said, would hide away from his sight because they could not bear fixing their eyes with his. My mother would say with firmness, his subjects regarded him as the father of the tribe. 